Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this flip through first impressions of the Serpent and the Peacock Tarot by Libra Moon. I received the Serpent and the Peacock Tarot from the creator of this deck for the purposes of review. And I am going to just take you guys through my initial first impressions. She did send me the deck in a tin, which I believe is how it comes typically, as well as a copy of the full size guidebook for the deck. Now I believe on her site, these two items are sold separately. I will have links to everything down below but let's get into it. So I will, did want to point out that it came really beautifully packaged with the book in this gorgeous box. This is the inside of the box. I just thought that was really cool. Libra Moon Tarot is the name of her business, um, or Libra Moon Inc. is the name of her business. Now this is intended to be a medieval interpretation of the traditional 78 card deck, just as it says here on the book. I will say the book has a really lovely um, soft touch or rose petal type finish, really lovely to, to hold and to pet. And I love that it comes in a tin. And I think I've seen um, custom tarot tins like this before. I didn't realize that they felt like kind of matte on the top. It's actually a really nice feeling top or lid but this is tarot sized so let's get into it yeah super handy it'll keep your cards nice and safe i love that so with the actual deck you also get a little pamphlet that just says um the serpent and the peacock 78 medieval interpretation of the traditional oh excuse me a medieval interpretation of the traditional 78 card deck guidebook available yeah um so i believe that that is sold sep the big guidebook is sold separately but with the actual deck you don't get a like little white book or anything it's just a little pamphlet so let's get into it. Now I believe that when I, I took a look at this when I first got it just to check to see if the cards were in order because I have found sometimes I get decks where the cards aren't in order. Um, and I believe these were mostly in order and I put them in the order of the guidebook because the guidebook is actually set up so that you begin with the minor arcana, the cups, then the pentacles, swords, wands, and finally the majors. So that's how I have ordered the deck um, so that we can go into or through the deck in the same order as the guidebook. So that's how we're gonna do it. Let's zoom in. The first thing that I noticed when I pulled this out to check the order was that the cards seem to be, they remind me of like um, manuscript uh, illuminations, illuminations, is that what it's called? Dustin's gonna kill me. <laughs> Um, this deck is right up his alley. He actually has this deck and showed it to me and Danny when he got it in. Um, but this deck reminds me of that, like the quirky art you see in medieval man manuscripts. I guess that's the point I was trying to make. So let's take a look. Here we have our Ace of Cups. Oh yeah, there's a couple here in the Two of Cups. I have no idea what's happening with this like dead person in the front though. This is the one thing I will say that I have noticed about medieval art is that it's got a, a very quirky feel. I'm not always sure if that quirky feel is entirely for me, but I love that these are definitely so far holding the intention of the meaning of the card. Oh, I didn't show the backs. That is what the backings look like. Really, really nice. And this is a, this cardstock feels like a standard like 330, uh, GSM smooth cardstock. It's nice. It's like not super matte, but also not glossy. And there is a gilding. I should show that too. There is this kind of not super, um, it's not that kind of gilding where it's super sharp feeling, but it has a little bit of a sparkle to it. So hopefully you can see that. There we go. So you can see what the gilding is like. Anyway, here we have the Three of Cups. I'm all over the place. Here we have the Three of Cups. I love this. I love that they're kind of together at a party. And I believe, I'm guessing that the creator added the actual physical cups in to the artwork because they do all look like the same cup, like the same style of cup. So that's kind of cool that that got worked in there. And here we almost have like a page of a manuscript in the front where you can see where this actual image came from. Do you see that? I think that's really cool. Here's our Four of Cups. He does look a little bit listless or bored. <laughs> the five of cups. This almost looks like two like devilly creatures were like gambling and one of them lost, which is kind of funny, the whole don't cry over spilled milk thing. Here we have the six of cups and it looks like somebody's plowing a field. The seven of cups. I don't know what I think of this illustration. There's a lot of border on this particular image that I haven't seen on the other ones. And I don't get that feeling of like um, choice that I'm normally looking for in that card. Here's the eight of cups. Here we have somebody who's definitely setting out on a journey, so that really works. 
the Nine of Cups. Oh, that's interesting. I love that the head is the sun. You definitely get that feeling of contentedness from this image. Oh, I love it. It's a rainbow. The Ten of Cups. That works. Yeah, and you can definitely see how these came from, these images are from manuscripts. I assume, I assume. There's actually not, um, I didn't see an introduction in the book that really told me anything about the deck or why it was created or the, the creator's intentions. I just really have the artwork and the interpretations to go off of. But um, I love this. Look at this Knight of Cups. He's got a very bobblehead look about him, hey? The Page of Cups has no head. Oh, the head is in like the belly. I don't know how I feel about this one. This looks like it came off of a map. The Queen of Cups. She looks very like coy. That kind of works actually. Her fingers on this hand are really making me uncomfortable. There's something about that hand shape that's, do you see that? What is happening with that hand? I don't know, I don't like it. I don't like the hand shape. Um, King of Cups. This works, you can tell people go to him that he's like a leader. And we're into the Pentacles. This is really interesting. I wish I knew, are these the astrological glyphs going around? No? I don't know what the glyphs are going around the pentacle, but I love that it's like this coin and then the tree growing out of it. And there's even a little purse hanging from the tree. I think if I was more familiar with um, manuscript initiations, I might have a different kind of appreciation for this art. But I do love, like, look at this. You can definitely get that juggling feel. You can tell that the creator put a lot of thought into choosing images that would represent the meaning of the card really well because so far these are lining up pretty, pretty nicely. There's the four. Yeah, that's a great one to have put the pentacles on. And I like that it's kind of, it looks like a pentacle, but it also looks like a coin. So you kind of get that, that vibe from it. That is a very strange cat. This deck, I feel like, is right. Oh, there's two cats. There's like a cat in front and a darker cat in back. I feel like this this deck is definitely up Danny and Dustin's alley for sure. The six of coins. What is with the head in the body? Like, is that a thing? That must be a thing, right? This is the seven of pentacles. And here we have that, like, he's, like, definitely seems pensive. And he's looking over his, like, little crop here. But, like... Oh, I don't understand the head and the body thing. It's, it's, and there's a hat and like, it's so awkward to look at, but this is classic medieval, like manuscript art for sure. Eight of coins. This person looks like they're definitely studying or refining their craft in some way. I love that they're sitting at the center of a labyrinth too, which definitely speaks to mastery or self mastery. I should say, oh, that's a pretty nine of coins or nine of pentacles. And there's the 10 with the pentacles in that shape of the Kabbalistic tree of life, which really works, obviously. And then we have this real community sort of generational feel here. We have some older people, some younger people. So really nice selection of images. Here's the page of pentacles. It's an owl. Knight of pentacles. Queen. And king. I think the court cards really work too. The ace of swords. I kind of feel like I'm not, I don't know that I'm necessarily a fan. I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera. I don't think I'm a fan of the way that this sword feels like it's kind of outlined. It looks like it was cut, it was obviously cut out of an image and put in here, but it feels like this just wasn't cleanly, like the line wasn't sort of edited along the sides. That, that would bug me, I'm not gonna lie. That would definitely bother me. And I don't normally notice that kind of thing, but it does feel like it needs to be, it needed to be a little bit more like zoomed in and cleaned up around the edges a bit because we're getting those strips of white. You're getting it on the side of the blade as well as around the pommel. Not a fan of that necessarily, but I'm not seeing it in this image. So it looks like it maybe was just missed on this Ace of Swords. I don't notice that blending issue on the Two of Swords. And this is a great image. It looks like the blindfold was added and the swords were added, but otherwise, um, yeah, this really conveys that feeling of the Two of Swords. This is cool. You almost get that metallic feel. Like the cards are just regular finish. There's no foiling, but you almost get the metallic look from that heart there. Oh, I like that. The Four of Swords. It looks like this is like a coffin that a tree has grown out of. And it looks like we're seeing the skull there. That seems a little dark for the Four of Swords, but I totally think it still works. You still get the positioning of the swords that lines up with Rider Waite Smith here. And yeah, it's interesting. The Five of Swords, that is a real dark looking card. That is very demon-y. Yeah, see, here's that blending issue again. Maybe Again, maybe it's just me and it might be intentional to add a bit of highlight or glow to the swords. I just, I don't like it. I don't like the way the swords are put in there like that. But I do appreciate, again, the art selection here. 
That's a great six of swords. Check that out. Seven of swords. I wonder actually if that white was there intentionally to make sure that the swords popped against the background. The more that I see it happening on different images, the more I'm like, mm, that might be on purpose. So I might just be being picky. Here's another weird cat though. Like that's what stands out to me about Danny talking about decks like this is the, all the weird animals that showed up, I guess, in, in medieval manuscript art. This is such a great eight of swords. She clearly looks and feels trapped, but there's an, a gap right where she's standing. She could literally just walk forward away from these evil demony guys. Nine of Swords. I wish in this card he wasn't so peacefully sleeping because really the Nine of Swords, I feel like they need to be more awake and he looks like he's like fast asleep. So the swords are there kind of looming, but you don't get that idea of sleeplessness. The positioning and like the image composition itself feels like it reminds me of the Rider Waite Smith card, but I need that like wakefulness or that fear or that anxiety in that image. For me, when I'm reading with the Nine of Swords, I like to see that. That is a very dramatic 10. That totally works. I do love that in some of these images, we get these like bits from the borders and the wording from the actual manuscript where the image probably came from. I like the way that looks. I think that's really cool. That's a weird page of swords. There's a face on the butt. Okay, maybe some of you guys can enlighten me. That, that's a common thing, right? It seems like it's a common theme in manuscript art to have these kind of creatures where like faces are in weird spots, right? Like here we have a creature with one cloven hoof, one like chicken leg, scales, a horse head or a donkey head, and a face on its behind. I don't, and a tail. I, and, and this is not, it's not like the creator of this deck drew this, right? Like this is real art that exists that was used to make these decks. But it's just, it's kind of funny because I just, why? I feel like the medieval people maybe were really repressed and needed to like, you know, get out some of their quirkiness on in their artwork. And I know, I'm sure there was a purpose to it, right? I just, I literally am not an art history buff at all. And those of you who are probably listening to me talk about this deck, just cringing. I apologize to everybody cringing currently. Not, this is not my area of expertise. So I'm literally taking it at face value, right? Queen of Swords. Oh, I like that Knight of Swords. Wait, why is the Queen of Swords? That was me. That should have been like that page yeah there's the knight of swords like him the queen of swords and the king of swords I like him he looks like he's holding a piece of rope and it just kind of makes me think of that idea of like like maybe there's um somebody on trial for something and he's holding a piece of hanging rope I don't know that why that's what I thought of I don't think that's necessarily what's happening but it did give me that immediate flash of like judgment happening or something along those lines and now we're into the wands we have this uh, owl for the ace of wands another cat for the two there's a lot of cats right I feel like there's definitely more cats than dogs in medieval art three of wands the four of wands five of wands see more faces in the body this time they have a face on their on their head as well that's really interesting for the five of wands like what are they competing for or fighting for here the six, yep, there's our laurel wreath. Again, we can see a bit of the manuscript there. The seven. The eight. Nine. And 10. It looks, is this demon carrying this person? Totally, that demon is carrying that person. Where, we don't know. Another interesting creature as the Page of Wands, but the sun, this does feel kind of deserty, fiery. This feels like an appropriate um, matchup for sure for the pa for the wand suit. Ooh, I like that the knight is a, is a girl and she's carrying a flaming heart that looks like an alchemical flaming heart perhaps. Interesting. And then the Queen of Wands holding a dragon. Love, love her. She's probably one of my favorite court cards so far. Love her. I feel like the queens in this deck are really, really good. And he, okay, the king has two faces again. Belly face and head face. That's got it. That's obviously a thing. That's like obviously a medieval manuscript art thing. Oh, yes, the majors. I, I don't know why, but I totally forgot we had majors coming still. I love him. He's kind of got this very storybook fairy tale feel, this fool. Interesting magician. So it's a bird and the face is in the belly torso area of the bird. And the bird is biting his nose. I would be so, okay, if you've watched this video this far, I would love to hear in the comments, how would you interpret this magician, this artwork for, this artwork choice for the magician? 
super curious. In fact, let's take a look at the guidebook just in case there is an explanation <laughs> of this magician because this one is really quirky and interesting. Okay, the magician. Um, so it says, keywords are divine. This is how the, the guidebook is laid out. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm looking at. This is how the guidebook is laid out. So we have a color um, image here from the card. And then it says, oh, I'm leaving sparkles. So there is some sparkles shedding off the gilding, but I think that would that would wear off in time. Anyway, um, keywords, divine intervention, finding yourself in the right place at the right time, unexpected serendipitous or eureka moments, being able manifest, being able to manifest, I'm guessing that means. The magician is the card of manifestation, but in its embryonic state. All the ingredients are there. You have the skills and resources to act. Something is ready to be embraced. This card represents that moment where everything is there, but it hasn't yet manifested, but it is about to. The magician can indicate the laws of attraction are at work, but only because you are ready and the timing is right, and that it can represent the definition of luck where outward opportunities present that can be seized because you are ready. It goes on from there. It's interesting, though. There's nothing here that really discusses the artwork choice or, like, why this image represents that concept. And I'm not seeing it um, in this image. I don't know what I'm seeing. It almost could could be a bit of hubris I might be seeing here, perhaps, with the idea that, like, like biting off your nose, your own nose or something. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But I'd be curious about what you think when you see this. Oh, I forgot to zoom us back in. Here we go. But here's another last look at that magician. Okay. High Priestess. She's a great High Priestess. She really has a Mary vibe, which I love here. Oh, beautiful Empress. Okay, she's my favorite Major Arcana card so far. He's a great Emperor too. Okay, so the Majors are going. Other than the Magician, I didn't, wasn't sure about that one. This is an excellent Hierophant. Oh, I like this lovers. Yeah, so far the majors I'm really enjoying. Again, the magician was the only one that really threw me for a loop so far. The chariot, this is great. Strength, yes. Good artwork choices here. The wheel of fortune, excellent, excellent. This has to be literally a depiction of the wheel of fortune. Like that has to be what that is, right? right. Ooh, interesting hermit. I've seen him before. I'm trying to think of where I've seen him before. He's got a tree over his shoulder and a little person dangling there. He definitely seems like an outcast in his own way, somebody who maybe doesn't fit in, in a way. Oh, beautiful justice card. It looks like nothing had to be altered here besides just the image like, you know, brought in. Already scales, already a sword. Beautiful, beautiful. The hanged man. Oh, I love his facial expression. Check this out. Okay, hold on, let me bring it in. Look at that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Great death card. Okay, it's interesting that the Rider Waite Smith um, flag looks like it was added here. I actually feel like this would have worked really well without that addition, and I think I would have preferred it without it. It almost takes me out of the scene a bit. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, this is clearly a Rider Waite Smith based deck, but that without that flag, I feel like it, it, it just does. It works better for me personally. Temperance. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know how I feel about this one. This is another one, though, with a really, really long neck. There's that angel wing thing happening for sure. We do get the idea of fire down here and liquid, but it looks like blood, not water. But still, we get that idea of, like, fire and liquid in here. So it works. It's just it's not... Oh, my goodness. That's a devil card. Holy moly. And the tower is really intense, too. Like, this is these are some intense devil... Like, look at what's happening here. It's a dark card, but hopefully you can see there's a lot. Whew. And then in the tower, there's just like a lot of chaos also happening. Oh my goodness. Oh, I like the star card. So I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. I know I tend to talk with my hands, which can be a problem. I'm trying to be better at that. The moon. The sun. I love that too. I love that the moon is kind of peeking down here under the water. Judgment. Oof. This is like, to me, this is immediately like crucifixion intensity it's like crucifixion draining blood and then all these like little sheep drinking from it I feel like that just it just feels really like a dark interpretation of this card maybe that's just my own stuff and the world oh this is really beautiful there's a lot happening actually in this artwork um it's a shame it's almost so small because there's so much happening look at that wow is that okay so let's get zoomed out <clears throat> so let's take a quick look at the guidebook um 
beyond what we've already done. So we've already read a bit of a sample card. There are upright and reversed meanings. Um, and it looks like the way that this guidebook is set up, we have a table of contents and then we get immediately into card interpretations. And the layout looks like it's similar for all of the cards. So you have keywords, your upright message, and then your reversed or with challenging cards around it message. And it looks like this stays true the entire way through. Let's see if the majors do anything different. They do not. So they still have the same amount of space. It's nice that the same amount of attention was given to the minors as to the majors. That's not always something you see. Um, and these, this is a pretty comprehensive guidebook. I'm a little bummed that there's nothing in the guidebook that addresses the artwork and the choice and what what the creator and the curator of this artwork and creator, creator of this deck really saw in that image. Like in some of them, it's obvious, like in The Hanged Man, right? Um, but here we just have like sort of a cat with two wands. And like, I'd love to hear more. Um, again, with the Nine of Swords, I'd love to hear more about the artist's or the creator's interpretation of the artwork, I guess is what I mean to say. Um, but that is how the guidebook is from front to back. There isn't any extra like layouts or an introduction or really any, um, I, I really wish there was more about why the deck was created, some more information from the creator. And maybe that's something that could be thought about for a future edition is like why this deck came into being. I always like to hear the story behind the deck. That might be unique to me though. I'd be curious. Do you guys like hearing like why a deck was curated or created? Is that something that's important to you or is that just like me being like my my thing? Anyway, let's give this a quick shuffle and we'll see how she fans. It might be 350 GSM. When I was touching it, it felt like 330. It feels like 330, but it has a bit of a stiffer shuffle. Oh, that could be the gilding. I bet it's the gilding that makes it feel a little bit tighter when you go to shuffle it. And this is the kind of gilding that does shed initially. I do have glitter on my hands, but I have another deck that has this kind of gilding. The um, Ellis deck, my copy of the Ellis deck has this kind of gilding where it's kind of sparkly and the sparkles do rub off. But after a little while of using it, that doesn't happen anymore. And you're kind of left with just a gilding that does seem to hold up pretty well. Um, I find that sometimes even though this gilding has a kind of cheaper feel when you first touch it, I find that it shows the dings less than that mirror, really mirror finished, super shiny gilding does. So it's something to think about before maybe dismissing this type of gilding out of hand, right? It does have its perks for sure. So yeah, it's got a really lovely shuffle and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a gorgeous fan out of this. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. That, my friends, is the Serpent and Peacock Tarot by Libra Moon. Thank you so, so much for joining me for this flip through first impressions. Super curious to hear about your guys' thoughts. As always, there will be a link down below where you can check this deck out for yourself. Thank you again to the creator of this deck for sending it to me for review. And I look forward to hearing from you guys all really, really soon. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed my flip through or if you found value in this video. Please do subscribe if you're new here for more deck walkthroughs and videos as well as my my anti-haul series and my say yes to the deck series and other fun things. So hang out with me and subscribe if you want to check out that stuff. And don't forget to click the little bell so you're notified of all my future videos. Thank you so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.